Hello everyone, this is Joshua Smith of Apollo's Artifact. In this episode, I'm going to be taking a look at a rather disgusting and despicable New York Times opinion piece. Of course, this is not simply an opinion. This is what the editorial staff of the New York Times actually thinks about uh, Southern people and Midwesterners as well. Uh, it, it's basically one that is an urban-rural divide. Uh, people in the urban areas, of course, do not understand people in the uh, rural or suburban or country areas of uh, the United States. The reasons why they don't understand is they have everything made for them everywhere else. See, they, they don't produce anything except paper and ideas and things that get put out in various electronic print forms. Okay, so they don't manufacture things, they don't build things, they don't make things. They have everything grown somewhere else and it's all delivered in to them, it's all shipped in to them, which is why if there's a major disaster within three days they're going to be having uh, catastrophic riots and probably attacking each other and eating each other and all these sorts of things. I mean, you'd see all of the aspects of civilization start to crumble within about a week or a little bit more. And this is something that uh, survivalists and preppers understand very well, and that people with these uh, urban mentalities do not and ultimately cannot understand. So what you'll see in this um, article is uh, sort of this uh, divide ethically between the notion of the greater good and the uh, practical good, you know, like practically how can we actually get things done, how can we accomplish them. So it's titled, In the Land of Self-Defeat. What a fight over the local library in my hometown in rural Arkansas taught me about my neighbor's go-it-alone mythology and Donald Trump's unbeatable appeal. And uh, one of the things that you'll see from these people who have this mentality is they constantly will denigrate this concept here, this go-it-alone mythology. Really, this is just uh, people who emphasize independence as a life value. You know, this is consistently denigrated by people like this. Big blue city leftist mentality. And really, this article could have been written in 1819 or 1919, just as uh, it was written here in 2019. This is just a consistent divide in uh, mentality and the way that people philosophically approach uh, various issues. And uh, this is by Monica Potts, who's uh, working on a book, it says, about low-income women in Arkansas, which I'm sure will be all kinds of horrendously biased. And um, unfortunately here, I'm not going to be able to show you the entirety of the article is asking me to log in, and I'm not going to do that, but I have a print version of my own that I'm going to use to go through this. And uh, one of the things you'll find in this article is, um, since these people are just completely obsessive about certain issues, by the time you get to the third paragraph, you'll see that she's uh, already gone racial with it. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to show you the entire article here, but I'm going to uh, skip on down to the third paragraph. Um, I will link all of this below so that you can follow along for yourself. I found a different version here with more of it accessible so that you can see it on the screen as I go along. She's talking about a person here that uh, that she met along the way who was uh, talking about these uh, various pointless congressional investigations into Trump, and he said that it was just a uh, waste of taxpayer money. She goes on here, it says, quote, Mr. Widener could have been talking about anything. His comment reflected a worldview that is becoming ever more deeply ingrained in the white people who remain in rural America. Now, I don't know why she's going racial instantaneously out of the box here. Washington politicians are spending money that they shouldn't be. Wow, that's a shocker. I mean, I've never heard that idea before. But of course, this is a leftist, and there's no amount of spending money that's ever wasteful. Unless, of course, it's for a wall on the southern border. Then all of a sudden, that's wasteful, magically. In 2016, shortly after Mr. Trump's victory, again, this is that uh, usage of a Mr. Trump, when you know the person has no respect for him at all, I would just uh, wish they would drop the formality altogether, you know. Don't say Mr. where you don't actually mean it. Catherine J. Kramer, a political scientist at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, summed up the attitude she observed over the years of studying rural Americans. Quote, The way these folks describe the world to me, their basic concern was that people like them in places like theirs were overlooked and disrespected, she wrote in Box, explaining that her subjects considered racial minorities on welfare as well as lazy urban professionals working desk jobs to be undeserving of state and federal dollars. 
People like my neighbors hate that the government is spending money on those who don't look like them and don't live like them. I don't think it has anything to do with what they look like. It's how people behave that matters mostly. She continues, but what I've learned since I came home is that they remain opposed even when they themselves stand to benefit. And I wrote down here in the margins, so could you be meaning that their principles are actually for small, unintrusive government perhaps, rather than just being some kind of racist idea? But see, the racism thing is, you know, it's the uh, biggest weapon that the left has, you know, so it's the one that they use over and over and over and over. You know, it's like um, when when you only have a hammer, everything starts to look like a nail. And that's what the left does is just hammer, nail, hammer, nail, hammer, nail. Racism, 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 racism. Uh, she continues here, quote, I returned to Van Buren County at the end of 2017 after 20 years living on the East Coast, most recently in the Washington area. So here she just admitted that she's been drinking the waters of the Potomac swamp water for a long time. Because I'm writing a book about Clinton, Van Buren's county seat, my partner and I knew it would be a challenge. The county is very remote, very religious, and full of Trump voters. I mean, boy, that's just evil, evil, and double and triple evil. And we suspected we'd stand out because of our political beliefs. Oh, yes, because political beliefs are just stamped on your forehead, right? I mean, people just look right through and know those things. Continuing, since coming back, I've realized that it is true that people here think life here has taken a turn for the worse. What's also true, though, is that many here seem determined to get rid of the last institutions trying to help them. Uh, hey, please stop trying to help us. Get out of the way. To keep people with educations out, uh, yeah, mostly. I mean, if they have a liberal arts degree or a humanities degree or something like that, yeah, I would probably rather keep people like that out. They're nothing but a bunch of uh, toxins bringing uh, venom into the community. Pointless division that shouldn't even be there in the first place. Continuing, and to retreat from community life and concentrate on taking care of themselves and their own families. Oh, wow, that's a really novel concept. I mean, should you not take care of your family and yourself? It's an attitude that is against taxes, immigrants, and government, but also against helping your neighbor. Are you freaking kidding me? I guarantee you that is complete total BS. I live here deep in the South, in the Bible Belt, in Tennessee, and I can assure you this is absolute garbage that she just wrote. People around here would help their neighbor in a heartbeat. There are any number of houses that I could go to here in my own neighborhood, uh, even at places uh, where people don't know me at all, and they would be willing to help me. And likewise, I would be willing to help them if they needed something. But this is the kind of crap that uh, leftists try to pull. You know, just blatant out-and-out -out lies. And here she throws in a sideswipe at the Electoral College because for some reason leftists have it in their mind that if they uh, could get rid of the Electoral College, uh, that that would then, you know, make sure that people like Hillary get to rule and dominate us forever and ever. And uh, likewise, of course, these people hate the Constitution. They hate the Bill of Rights. They hate the First Amendment. They hate the Second Amendment. They hate the Founders. So she says here, most Americans live in cities, but our political system gives rural areas like Van Buren outsize voting power. Oh, I guess because they shouldn't get representation at all because people like you know better, don't you? See, that's the presupposition that people like this always have is that they know better. My time here makes me believe that the impeachment scandal will not hurt Mr. Trump, Mr. Trump, and that Democrats who promise to make the lives of people like my neighbors better might actually help him. Yes, stop trying to help us because you don't know what you're doing. I realized this after a fight over, of all things, our local library. In April, a local man who operates the Facebook group Van Buren County Today Unfiltered posted the agenda for a coming meeting of the Quorum Court, the county's governing body. The library board wanted to increase the pay it could offer a new head librarian who would be combining her new job with an older one to $25 an hour. And I wrote out to the side here in the margins, I have a printed off version of this article, by the way. And I said, oh, is this going to be so that they could invite certain types of uh, miscreants into the libraries to uh, flaunt and gyrate their naughty bits in front of little kids? Because that's what we've seen happening in a, in a lot of libraries lately and that's not good. Continuing, only about 2,500 people live in my hometown. 
The library serves the entire county, which has an estimated 16,600 people, a marked decline from the population at the last census in 2010. The library has historically provided a variety of services for this community. It has offered summer reading camps for children and services like high-speed internet. Oh my goodness, like who doesn't have that now? Sewing classes, oh I'm sure we have to go to a library for that, and academic help. I grew up going to the library and visited it often when I returned. It was always busy. I thought people would be supportive. It's busy with a handful of people, okay? I see the libraries around here all throughout the state and other states, and they're all about the same. There's a congregation of the usual suspects who are always there. But you have an access to an infinity of knowledge, a literal human infinity of information on the internet that you cannot even begin to scratch the surface of that you can get from your home. You don't need a library for these things. You can buy the books, you can check them out online, whatever. Continuing, instead they started a fight. The battle began on the Facebook post which had 240 comments by the end. The first comment came from Amy Hamilton who reiterated her point when I interviewed her several months later. Quote, if you want to make $25 an hour, please go to a city that can afford it, she wrote. We the people are not here to pay your excessive salaries through taxation or in any other way. Exactly. Now, why is that not a legitimate personal view for this? There was general agreement among the Facebook commenters that no one in the area was paid that much. The librarian's wages would have worked out to be about $42,200 a year, and the people who do actually earn incomes that are similar, teachers and many county officials, largely remained quiet. Clinton has a median income of $34,764 and a poverty rate of 22.6%. That's almost one-fourth of the people there, lady, okay? Why would they want to pay a librarian that much money? It's absurd. When a few of us, including me, pointed out that the candidate for the library job had a master's degree. Oh, wow, we're, we're so intimidated and impressed by your master's degree in what? Library science? How to stack books, how to put books on shelves, how to check books in and check books out. More people commented on the uselessness of education. Quote, call me narrow-minded, but I've never understood why a librarian needs a four-year degree, someone wrote. We were taught the Dewey Decimal System in grade school. Never sounded like anything too tough. And also I uh, would, would point out here that there are, are a lot of uh, unemployed and underemployed uh, master's degrees and uh, PhDs out there. And that happens for a reason. It's because we have a glut in education. There's so many people going into it who really don't need to be there at all. They need to be doing something more practical, something technical. We need electricians. We need plumbers. We need people who do things of that nature. I watched the fight unfold with a sense of sadness, anger, and frustration. I started arguing. It didn't work. The pay request was pulled from the quorum court's agenda. I didn't realize it at first, but the fight over the library was rolled up into a bigger one about the library building and an even bigger fight than that about the county government. What should it pay for? How and whether people should be taxed at all? The library fight was a, in itself a fight over the future of rural America. What it meant to choose to live in a county like mine. What my neighbors were willing to do for one another. See, the left always thinks that stealing your taxpayer dollars is you being willing to help one another. Whereas many of us down here uh, see this as just pure theft. What they were willing to sacrifice to foster a sense of community. Uh oh, foster a sense of community. No, you're either a community or you're not. Stealing taxpayer dollars for a library does not foster a sense of community, you fool. Skipping down a bit here. A 2016 analysis by National Public Radio, NPR, with their uh, simpering snake voices, as Alex Jones calls them correctly, found that as counties become more rural, they tend to become more Republican. Completely rural counties went for Mr. Trump by 70.6% overall, which makes my county politically average. Van Buren gave Mr. Trump 73% of its vote. Rural America is not a monolith, but a majority of Rural counties fit perfectly into Mr. Trump's preferred demographics. They're largely white. Uh-oh, racism again. 96.2% 96 in Van Buren and rates of educational attainment are low. And uh, the clear implication here that she's trying to make that leftists always do is that uh, these are just a bunch of stupid, racist, redneck hicks rather than people who are actually standing on principles that matter and far, far, far predate Mr. Trump. Uh, she continues here, people are leaving rural areas for cities because that's where the jobs are. Wow, shocking analysis there. According to one analysis, between 2008 during the Great Recession and 2017, the latest year for which data is available, 99% of the job and population growth occurred in counties 
with at least one city of 50,000 people or more, or in counties directly adjacent to such cities. It's hard to generalize what's happening to rural counties, but many are faced with a shrinking property tax base and a drop in economic activity, which also decreases sales tax revenues. And actually, I have a bunch of data here that directly contradicts what she's trying to say here, which shows that a whole lot of the big blue cities and big blue states themselves are actually losing populations as people move out because of the craziness that's taking place there. With the high debts and the high taxes and the poop in the streets everywhere and the uh, heroin use, uh, you know, just skyrocketing homeless problems all over the place. But remember, as she's going to tell you, lefties know better. You know, and it, it really just doesn't fit her narrative to talk about all the people who have been leaving Detroit and L.A. and Chicago because of the horrendous crime rates and murder rates. And here, many rural counties are also experiencing declines in whatever industries were once the major employers. In Appalachia, this is coal. That would be because of Obama regulations, which are being rolled back right now by Mr. Trump. In much of the Midwest, it's heavy manufacturing, and in my county, and uh, the heavy manufacturing loss, of course, has been to overseas places like China, which uh, should be reversed if uh, we actually are willing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with China for these things. And in my county and many other counties, it's natural gas and other extractive industries. Again, all of this stuff is because of climate change-obsessed left-wing regulations and part of the UN uh, agenda to uh, basically uh, merge everything into these huge uh, Judge Dredd type of megacities. This part of Arkansas sits on Fayetteville Shell, which brought in natural gas exploration in the early 2000s. For about a decade, the gas companies paid local taxes on their property, equipment, and the money they made from extracting natural gas, and landowners paid property taxes on the royalties they earned. It was a boom. Many people at the time here and elsewhere expected that the moment money would uh, last longer than it did. Instead, the price of natural gas plummeted in 2009 and profits declined. Production slowed. One of the biggest natural gas companies in the area stopped paying taxes to the counties here, arguing that the rates were unfair. The company in five Arkansas counties, including mine, are still locked in litigation. Well, yeah, that's what they're going to do. You know, if you're imposing unfair taxes, they're going to try to find some way to get out of it. And I don't know why you lefties can't understand that. Uh, skipping down just a tad here, it says here, 45 states restrict the way local governments can collect property taxes on their citizens in some way. In Arkansas, property and sales tax increases. The main source of revenue for many local governments have to be approved by the voters. And I wrote out in the margins here, I mean, God forbid that the voters actually have a say in how they're going to be robbed. See, again, leftists don't want you to have a say in that. They just want to be able to confiscate your stuff. It means many county governments are getting less money on several fronts. A report from the National Association of Counties from 2016 was titled, Doing More with Less. It's the new normal. Good. Get used to it. Tighten your belt. That's what you need to do. That's how people like you learn lessons. And then I'll move down a bit more here to uh, get to something that I think is really significant for this article. She, she writes here, Disclosure, my mother was on the library board when some of the decisions about the new building were made. That's in terms of a library building. And I said, this is, you know, this is so typical of the New York Times to bury her note of personal interest here on page three, at least page three of my printed off version anyway. But this is just uh, rank deceptiveness. Uh, this should have been at the headline of the article up above so that you knew that going in that she had this personal interest going on. I uh, moved down a bit here. She says, when I spoke to other county residents, many thought all of the budget cuts were a sad but necessary correction to the county's previously profligate ways. Yes, absolutely. They're right and you're wrong, Monica. Miss Hamilton, the Facebook commenter, told me that the voters fixed the county's problems by electing Republicans. She says here, quote, some people are more fiscally responsible than others. Absolutely correct once again. Miss Hamilton, who is 52, had moved to the county during the natural gas boom in 2008 and continued working with that industry even after it left. She commutes each week to work in the Midland Odessa area of Texas. She noted that Clinton is a small town and simply couldn't afford the luxury of government services. I'm sure not all government services. Some. Let's put a, you know some kind of qualifier in there. Quote, if you're looking for a handout, this is not the place. We can't support that. Good. That's very good. Uh, we move down here where she quotes uh, another person who she talked to. He told me the idea of paying the librarian $25 an hour was typical government waste. He added it's the same thing in Washington. He's 100% true. That's what it is. And of course, also buried down here at the very bottom of page three, it says the typical private sector wage in Van Buren is 10 to $13 an hour. 
And uh, many of the people in that community thought that that's probably about what a librarian should make. And, you know, personally, I would I would say maybe that could be, you know, expanded a little bit. Maybe you could go, uh, say, 15 to $19 an hour, but certainly not $25 an hour. I, say, I would say that would be a maximum for librarians in a place like that because they're largely, you know, sitting on their duff in an air-conditioned building when it's hot or a heated environment when it's cold outside. Meanwhile, you have all these country folk who are out there working with their hands and working with their back and they're getting blisters and they're hurting their backs and everything else. I mean, a librarian's job is a luxury job by comparison. I mean, I've done those other kinds of jobs. I've been out there in it. I know what it's like. And I've spent lots and lots and lots of time in libraries as well, and I see what it's like in there. You know, that that's one of the things that, uh, you know, these... Uh, city-dwelling urbanites don't understand, you know, is that their lifestyles are luxury lifestyles, which are really built on the uh, sweat of the brow of the people in the hinterlands, you know. They're the ones who make that possible for you. Like, you have all this kind of stuff that's brought into you. It's shipped into you because it's made and grown and produced in all these other places, and then you sort of just uh, parasitically pull off of the rest of that. And that's what's so bad about a place like uh, Washington, D.C., is that it's just loaded with these, uh, you know, parasites. And then the bad thing about it is that the parasites in D.C. then want to turn around and criticize the host. And then you uh, see even uh, how... <clears throat> and then as we uh, move down here, this is on uh, page 5 of mine, uh, just how vile all this is. Uh, she continues, quote, Almost everyone I spoke with feels that the county overspent during the gas boom years and that the bill is coming due. We got wasteful and stupid, and now we have to go back to common sense, said Corrine Weatherly, who owns a dress and costume-making shop called So What. Miss Weatherly also runs a county fair, and so she shows up to almost every quorum court meeting. And I would say she's 100% right. It's always best to return to common sense, which the left almost completely and totally lacks. Uh, continues here, this worldview will continue to affect national elections. The most dominant news source here is Fox News. Uh, the most dominant news source is Fox News because it's the only thing that has any kind of opposition to NPR, PBS, ABC, NBC, CBS, MSNBC, CNN. You get the same worldview from all of those, which is the same worldview that you get delivered in K-12 through education and university education. It's the same thing that you get from uh, you know, the dropping ratings of Saturday Night Live and all the late night talk show hosts like Crying Jimmy Kimball. Yes, I mispronounced his name on purpose. Uh, it continues here. The most dominant news source here is Fox News, which I think helps perpetuate these attitudes. There's another element, too. For decades, the dominant conservative theory of politics is that government should be run like a business, lean and efficient. And I wrote down here, yeah, how dare the people oppose we, the progressive elite, who know best how everything ought to be ran. I'm going to skip down a bit here. She says, the people left in rural areas are more and more conservative and convinced that the only way to get things done is to do them yourself. Wow, isn't that just the old American notion of self-reliance? I mean, what is so wrong with that? See, the left fundamentally hates America and always wants to make it into something else. And I'll uh, skip down here to the bottom of uh, my page five. It says, a considerable part of rural America is shrinking, and for some, this means it's time to go into retreat. Rather than pitching in to maintain what they have, people are willing to go it alone, to devote all their resources to their own homes and their own families. Uh, what's wrong with that? I mean, has that not been the human norm for thousands of years? Isn't that what made humanity so successful, is that people focus on their own family and their self and their home life, and then the community comes after that? You can't put the community first, honey. It doesn't work that way, Miss Molly. And over at the top of uh, page six here, it says, she writes, um, it makes me wonder if appeals from Democratic candidates still hoping to win Trump voters over by offering them more federal services will work. Many of the Democratic frontrunners have released plans that call for more federal tax investment. She calls it investment in rural infrastructure. Mr. Widener told me he had watched some of the Democratic debates and his reaction was that everything the candidates prompt proposed was going to cost me money. Yes, absolutely it will. Just look at Elizabeth Warren's newly revealed $52 trillion Medicare for all. And she calls it Medicare for all as if people just think Medicare is good. I mean, I grew up, I'm 42, at a time when everybody knew Medicare was like a half measure. It's not something that's very good that you desire anyway. So why the hell would everybody want Medicare for all? 
And indeed, she even said that, uh, she, you know, she's going to reduce the pay for doctors. Well, you're going to reduce the incentive for people to be doctors. So you're going to have fewer doctors. Economists told her, well, there's, it's going to cause a loss of some two million jobs. And she said, well, that's just the pain of uh, change. Well, you don't get to dismiss people that way. Okay. It doesn't work like that. I'm going to continue here. Quote, economic appeals are not going to sway any Trump voters. Actually, economic appeals already swayed Trump voters. That's why they voted in a businessman so that he would do what he's doing now, which has set all these records in the stock market and with the unemployment numbers and all of this. That is precisely why people sent a non-politician in there into the swamp where all the parasites are. Continuing, who view anyone who is trying to increase government spending, especially to help other people, with disdain, even if it ultimately helps them too. And Trump voters are carrying the day here in Van Buren County. They see Mr. Trump slashing of the uh, national safety net. Now, where has he slashed the national safety net? I'm not aware of this. I don't even know what she's referring to at all. Uh, and then she continues here, and withdrawal from the international stage. What withdrawal from the international stage? Is she talking about not creating new wars like Bush and Obama did? Is that the way we get on the international stage or entering into the TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which, of course, would have hurt Americans' uh, economy once again? That's exactly why we had to get out of that thing. These things reflect their own impulse writ large. Yes, Monica, that's what the voting is all about. They believe every tax dollar spent now is wasteful and foolish and they will have to pay for it later. Yeah, you have to pay for it one way or another. There is no such thing as a free lunch. You need to understand that. It is, a, it is as if there will be a nationwide scramble to cover the shortfall just as there was here with a library. Um, what are they going to do? Conjure up money with magic? How else do you think that's going to happen? Continuing, as long as Democrats make promises to make their lives better with free college and Medicare for all, sound like they include government spending. Okay, so how is it you're going to give away free college and Medicare for all and that not include government spending? Once again, are you going to conjure up money with magic? Are you going to tax everybody to death? These voters will turn to Trump again, and it won't matter how many scandals he's been tarnished by. Yes, because the people don't care about these so-called scandals that are manufactured by the New York Times. The New York Times is basically the blog of the billionaire Carlos Slim, who calls your shots, just as Jeff Bezos does over at the Washington Post, and just as George Soros does in so many other ways. Isn't it funny how these lefties act like they're, they're so against certain things, but then when these billionaires say jump, they say how high? And the last thing that I want to show you here. Uh, you know, while they're on this uh, thing about a librarian is, uh, you know, just look at the job description for librarians. And do you really think that that qualifies for uh, $25 an hour in a place where most people are only making 10 to $13 an hour? I think it's completely absurd. I mean, just look at this. Assist patrons with finding resources and locating books. Select, acquire, catalog, classify, circulate, and maintain library materials. Check books in and out of the library. Oh my goodness, you've got to be kidding. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Thank you.